Hey guys, today I'll be taking a look at the latest polls for the 2022 Senate elections that were just released in the last two days. And these polls will have some major impacts on perceptions for many of the Senate elections on the ballot this year. We have two new polls from Arizona showing Mark Kelly with the lead, but we have a fourth poll in a row from Georgia that shows Herschel Walker defeating Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock. We also have new polls from Vermont, Florida, and New York with the polls in Vermont and Florida both showing much closer races than expected, a new poll out of Pennsylvania, a new poll out of Utah that shows Evan McMullen actually leading over Republican incumbent Mike Lee. I think this is the most interesting poll we're going to look at today. And we also have three new polls from the 2024 Senate election in which Joe Manchin will be attempting to run for a third full term in office. And so coming back to the 2022 race and looking at the map that we have, this is probably what's going to happen. Democrats are probably going to hold onto their seats in Colorado and New Hampshire, while Republicans maintain their seats in Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida. So in the very end, the five seats in Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin are going to be the seats that determine the balance of power in the upper chamber for the next two years. Democrats currently are running incumbents in Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, while Republicans are running incumbent Ron Johnson in Wisconsin. Pat Toomey, the Republican incumbent in Pennsylvania, though, is not running for re-election, and so he's been replaced by Mehmet Oz, who's running against John Fetterman. And so today, we do have new polls out of Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, and the three polls in these states are going to have a major impact on these races, and these races are, of course, some of the most important elections that we have this year. And so we're just going to get right into it, starting off with the election in Arizona. You have two new polls, both showing Mark Kelly leading by margins of 6 and 2%. These polls are from Insider Advantage and Emerson College, both relatively reliable pollsters. And so Martha McSally was the incumbent in 2020, and she lost her seat in the special election to Mark Kelly. That's why Mark Kelly is running for his first full term this year. And so Democrats will have to maintain the seat that they hold in this state. If Blake Masters flips Arizona, Democrats Democrats' chances at winning the Senate basically are gone. The Democratic Party is not going to maintain a majority in the Senate if Arizona does flip red. And if you look at the polls right now, that may look unlikely. However, you do have to consider the fact that Mark Kelly was doing better in the polls in 2020 than he is doing right now. Looking at the final polls released for the 2020 special election for the Senate seat, Mark Kelly did lead on average by significantly larger margins. However, if you look at the polls right now, Mark Kelly has not really broken double digits in quite a while. But in my opinion, I don't think this is going to be too big of an issue for his campaign. Mark Kelly is still in a relatively strong position, and as the incumbent, he is not likely to underperform expectations as much. And of course, with Democrats still maintaining the momentum on their side, if this continues, Mark Kelly is probably on a pretty straight path to re-election. Looking at the Economist forecast, which is the forecast I want to use today, the Democratic Party right now has an 85% chance at maintaining the seat in Arizona. If you look at how the odds have changed over the last few months, you've seen that Mark Kelly was always favored in this election. I do think the economy does favor Democratic candidates a bit too much, but still, these numbers have been very favorable to him for a pretty long time, and currently, Mark Kelly is actually expected to win by 6.2% according to this forecast. I do think the race is going to be a bit closer than this. I think that Mark Kelly's probably going to win by the same margin that he won by in 2020, but none Nonetheless, I do have Arizona right now as a lean Democratic state. I don't think it's going to be likely like 538 or The Economist says, but I think that Mark Kelly in the end is going to be elected to his first full term in Congress. Next up, we have a new poll from Georgia. This one shows Herschel Walker leading by 3%. And Georgia, even though it's considerably more competitive than Arizona, it's arguably less important to the Democratic Party in terms of winning the Senate majority. So looking at the election in Arizona right now, if this state goes red, Democrats are not going to win the Senate. Because if Arizona goes red, Nevada is going to probably go red as well as Georgia, and Republicans are going to take back the Senate. However, if Democrats can win in Arizona but they lose Georgia, they do still have another pathway to the majority, and that of course is winning in both Nevada and Pennsylvania, even if the Peach State goes red. However, if we do look at the overall map here, the Republican Party is only winning right now in Wisconsin and Georgia, according to 538, by 1% in Wisconsin and exactly a tie in Georgia, even though Walker does have a very slight advantage. So right now, this entire map is going to be so competitive that really nobody is going to be able to tell who can actually win until we finally see election results come out. I see that 
Arizona, if it goes red, the Democrats are probably going to lose. Because if Arizona goes red, that means Democrats are going to severely underperform expectations. And if that happens in Arizona, it's probably going to happen in many of these other competitive elections. So looking at the overall polling average in Georgia right now, Raphael Warnock maintains a one-point lead against Herschel Walker. However, if we do look at the four most recent polls, every single one of them has shown Herschel Walker in the lead. This should be very alarming to Democrats. The only saving grace for them here is that the latest poll from the Chicago Group, this is the major right-wing pollster in our country, they only have Walker up by 1%. This really is not that big of a deal. If the only poll released for this race from Georgia was from the Chicago Group and then Walker leading by 1%, Raphael Warnock would still probably win a re-election. And so as I said, this election is going to be probably one of the closest ones that we have. I think the two most competitive elections right now are in Georgia and Nevada and arguably Wisconsin as well, as Mandela Barnes is surging in new polls. And so according to The Economist right now, Democrats have a 55% chance at maintaining the seat currently held by Raphael Warnock. So definitely Georgia is going to be a major race, and currently they have Democrats winning 50.4% of the vote to 49.6% for Herschel Walker, and of course Warnock has that 55% chance at winning re-election. Looking at this forecast over time, Georgia used to be very, very competitive, but recently it has become more and more likely that Democrats are going to hold on to it, even though odds for Democrats have gone down slightly in just the last few days. And if you look at the 538 forecast, they have both candidates at a 50% chance of winning, almost exactly the same, although Walker does have an incremental lead. Next up in Georgia, we have another very crucial race to Democrats' chances at maintaining control of the Senate. However, this is the fourth poll in a row that has shown Herschel Walker leading over the Democratic incumbent. Looking at our map, as I said before, if Republicans win Arizona, they're probably going to win the Senate. Because looking at how well Democrats are doing right now in the state, Democrats are going to have to severely underperform expectations if they lose Arizona, which means they're probably going to underperform in many other races in states like Georgia, Nevada, and Pennsylvania, as well as Wisconsin for it to be enough for Republicans to win basically most of the key races. So if we do look at the Arizona election right now, though, it is likely Democrats are going to hold on to it. But unlike Arizona, Democrats can't afford to lose Georgia and still win the majority. Democrats have a higher chance at winning both Nevada and Pennsylvania than they have at winning Georgia. So right now, Georgia is not as crucial as these other three races. So Republicans can still win this election and still lose control of the Senate for a second time. So looking at the polls right now. On average, Raphael Warnock does maintain a one-point lead, despite being behind in every single poll that's been released in the last month. The last time that Raphael Warnock was ahead, this was a Democratic-funded poll conducted from the 26th of July all the way until the 1st of August, so it really has been a while. But the only saving grace for Democrats here is that even a poll from the Trafalgar Group, which is the most right-wing pollster in the country, only has Walker up by 1%. If this was the only poll released for this race, I would have Raphael Warnock winning. A 1% margin for a Republican, according to a Trafalgar Group poll, really is nothing. So right now, Walker's 1% lead may still hold, and polls in Georgia have been known for being very, very accurate. They were very accurate, especially in the 2020 election cycle. And if you look at the predictions for this election, every single prediction for the Georgia Senate election has the state as a toss-up. We have the Cook Political Report, Inside Election, Stabdos Crystal Ball, Politico, RCP, Fox News, DDHQ, and 538. Every single one of these pundits have the Georgia election as a pure toss-up. The Economist right now gives Raphael Warnock a 55% chance at winning this election, 50.4% of the vote, 49.6% for Herschel Walker, and of course a 45% chance at winning the election. And then 538 has both candidates at 50%. So definitely Georgia is going to be probably arguably the most competitive election that we have. I used to have that as Nevada, but I do think Democrats' chances there are slightly higher than they are in Georgia now. And so in Georgia right now, I do have the state as a tilt Republican won for the first time in a very long time. I think that Herschel Walker does have a very slight advantage, even though this election definitely could very much go both ways. I'm not saying that Herschel Walker is definitely going to win, but as of right now, things are looking up for him. He does have, he has seen an uptick in numbers, and I think that maybe he could just flip this seat. In the state of Vermont, we have a new poll from the Trafalgar Group. This one has Welch leading by 7%. Peter Welch is the sole representative of Vermont's only seat in the United States House of Representatives, and so he is very well known to Vermont voters. I think a 7% margin is absolutely laughable. The Trafalgar Group is going to be so far off in this election. I mean, just look at the 2016 race in Vermont. Patrick Leahy won his re-election by 28.2%, and of course, Vermont is the most Democratic state in the entire country. Joe Biden won it by 
almost 40% in 2020. So Democrats are not going to lose in Vermont. They're going to win by at least 15 percentage points. And so Peter Welch up by 7% is going to have almost no impact on this race. Vermont is going to stay a very solid blue state for decades to come. And moving on to Florida, we have a new poll that once again suggests that the election in Florida is probably going to be more competitive than we previously thought. Looking at the overall average, though, Mark Rube does maintain a 3.1% lead, but this most recent poll from Insider Advantage only has Demings down by 2%. So Val Demings right now is within reach of winning the Senate seat, but it will still be very, very difficult. The state of Florida is a state that's shifting more and more to the right, and Mark Rubio is still a pretty strong incumbent, even though Val Demings is a good nominee on the Democratic side. Mark Rubio is still pretty popular. In 2016, he won by 7.7% against Patrick Murphy. And of course, in 2010, he defeated Charlie Crist and Kendrick Meek. So Charlie Crist is running for governor of Florida in 2022. He's probably going to lose that race. So he's not going to be too much help to Val Demings. I think that Mark Rubio is going to benefit from Ron DeSantis being on the ballot with him. And so Democrats really do not have a chance in the Sunshine State this year. If you look at the previous elections in the state in 2016, of course, Rubio won by 8% for the Senate seat for a second term. In office. And then in 2018, Rick Scott won by 0.12% against Democratic incumbent Bill Nelson. I do not think that Democrats are going to have any major wins in Florida anytime soon. So that's why right now I do have Florida as a likely Republican state. I do think it is very possible that Rubio will win by a margin over five percentage points. And the final poll release yesterday is from New York. This one has Chuck Schumer up by a margin of 24% against Joe Pinion. We're not going to look at a different page. There is no polling average for the polls in New York. But Chuck Schumer is going to outperform Kathy Hochul's margin in the governor election against Lee Zeldin. Kathy Hochul is a very unpopular governor considering how democratic the state of Florida overall is, even not just New York City. Overall, the state of New York is still a very democratic place, and the Chuck Schumer is definitely going to do much better than the very unpopular governor. I think it's mainly because of Democrat scandals in major statewide offices in the last couple of years. We, of course, just saw Antonio Delgado become the new lieutenant governor for Kathy Hochul after a previous one had to resign as a result of a bribery scandal and then of course this came all after Andrew Cuomo was forced out of office in late 2021. So Joe Pinion has no chance at defeating the Senate Majority Leader and if Chuck Schumer is able to plan out his races right, he'll probably maintain that job as long as Democrats hold on to Arizona, Nevada and flip either Pennsylvania or hold on to Georgia. Next up in Pennsylvania, the Keystone State, John Fetterman leads by 9% against Mehmet Oz in the most recent poll. This is another state that Democrats are doing very well in, just like Arizona. Honestly, this race should be much more competitive than it is, considering that this seat is currently held by a Republican. So overall, John Fetterman maintains an average 8% lead over Mehmet Oz, and the TV doctor is probably not going to become the successor to Pat Toomey in the United States Senate. Every single poll so far has shown John Fetterman with a commanding lead, even the most recent and Chicago poll has Fetterman leading by five. So it's very likely that Mehmet Oz is going to win this election. The only saving grace for him is that Democrats are probably going to underperform expectations. If you look at the 2018 Senate race, Bob Casey won by a margin of 13%. However, according to the polls, he was expected to win by margins almost closer to 20%. And if you look at the 2016 race, you will see that most predictions had it as a lean Democratic state in favor of Katie McGinty. But of course, she would lose to incumbent Pat Toomey me by 1.4%, despite most of the polls from McGinty up. So no matter what, John Fetterman is going to underperform expectations. He is not going to win the 2022 race by 8%. I think that a 3 to 4% margin is much more likely for the Democratic nominee, even though, you know, he's winning by 8 right now in the polls. Polls can be very wrong, and they have been known for being inaccurate in Pennsylvania. So I do think that John Fetterman is going to win by a much smaller margin, but will still be in a major win for Democrats nonetheless, because honestly, Democrats should have had no expectations expectations to actually flip a state this year, considering where they were just a few months ago looking at the generic ballot numbers. I mean, if you were going back to May or April, the Republican Party was almost guaranteed to win races in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, maybe even Nevada. But as of right now, the Democratic Party is doing very well in many of the competitive races. So Pennsylvania has quickly become a state that Democrats are probably going to flip. The Economist right now currently gives John Fetterman an 88% chance at flipping the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Mehmet Oz only has a 12% chance at winning and is only expected to win around 46.4% of the vote. And if you look at how these chances of winning have changed for both parties, you will see that Democrats were not always ahead in this race. John Fetterman was behind for a very long time, and it was really only after the summer began that the odds started to go up so much 
for John Fetterman. And if you look at the 530 forecast, you will see a pretty similar pattern. Looking at the numbers here, John Fetterman only had a 36% chance at winning at the very beginning of June. Now he has an 80% chance of winning. So the odds for John Fetterman have more than doubled in just three months. And that's just how much the Senate map has shifted in the last couple of weeks and months, of course. So as of right now, I have Pennsylvania as a lean Democratic state. I don't think it's going to be likely like the polls suggest, but still, like I said before, a win and a major win for Democrats nonetheless. And now we can finally look at the new poll from Utah that shows Evan McMillan leading by 1% margin against Mike Lee. In my opinion, this is probably one of the most interesting polls we're going to look at today. McMillan up by one point really is a pretty big deal. Just look at the 2016 race here in Utah. Mike Lee won by 41 points. So as of right now, the polling average still has Lee up by 8.2%, but McMullen leading the poll, even though it was an internal poll for his campaign, is still a pretty big deal. If you look at the overall spread, though, McMullen does lead mostly by double-digit margins, especially his own campaign polls have him up significantly, but most polls do show him within the 5 to 12% range, and so I think that as of right now, McMullen does have a good chance at making this election very, very competitive, but I do not think Utah is going to go to an independent it really is still just very, very difficult for that to happen right now in the United States. But McMullen has received the endorsement of the Utah Democratic Party that will help his campaign significantly, as of course most Democrats are going to vote for McMullen than the pro-Trump lead. If you look at the 2016 presidential election, Trump is not that popular in Utah. He only won 46% of the vote in Utah because Evan McMullen, the independent candidate, won 22%. Clinton only won at 27%. So McMullen almost came in second place in the state of Utah in 2016. And so he does have a chance in Utah right now. I think that in the next couple of months, if he can run his campaign really, really well, there's a very good chance that Mike Lee could almost be defeated. If you look at the 530 forecast, Utah is no longer a solid Republican state. Mike Lee only has a 94% chance at winning this election now, and this is a pretty big shift. McMullen has a 6% chance at winning, and for an independent, that is a pretty big deal. So as of right now, I'll be moving Utah out of the solid Republican category and into the likely Republican category as McMullen is becoming a stronger and stronger threat to Mike Lee's re-election. And so looking at the map here, I'm not going to fill in Nevada and Wisconsin. This is not a prediction. I'm just going over to these states and filling them in to give you guys a visual. But these polls, as well as, of course, the map here, continue to suggest a very close midterm this year. We will now be moving on to look at the polls from West Virginia. I did want to cover these shortly in just one video, so it's going to be this video. Looking at these three new polls between Joe Manchin, Jim Justice, Alex Mooney, and Patrick Morrissey, you will see that Joe Manchin is not doing so well. Joe Manchin is the Democratic senator from the very conservative state of West Virginia. Trump won West Virginia by 39% in 2020 and by 42% in 2016. However, in 2018, Joe Manchin won re-election to a second full term by 3.4% against Patrick Morrissey. So Patrick Morrissey may choose to challenge Manchin again, and I do think he has a chance in 2024, considering where the national environment is going to be. Democrats are probably going to be in a better place in 2024 than they are right now in the midterm year. However, if you look at the 2018 national numbers, you will see that Democrats were in a very good position. They were leading by 8.6% in the polls nationwide on election day, and of course, that's what helped Joe Manchin win his re-election. So Joe Manchin was probably by far the most vulnerable Democrat in 2018. However, in 2024, the same thing is probably going to happen. He said that he is planning on running once again, and so if he does, he will be very, very vulnerable. Patrick Morrissey, if he is nominated for a second time, will probably win this election right now, in my opinion. And of course, Jim Justice also leads in the most recent poll. Jim Justice is the fairly moderate governor of West Virginia. He's somebody that even supported people getting the vaccine. He is not that a big fan of Trump. However, he is still very, very conservative. So if you do look at the most recent poll between Jim Justice and Joe Manchin, Justice does perform the best out of all three Republicans. However, if you look at polling that was conducted just earlier this year in January, Joe Manchin led in all three of these polls, 4% against Justice and then 21% against both Mooney and and Morrissey. So, you know, these polls obviously are not going to be reliable. We are still over two years away from the 2024 election, but I did think that it was interesting to look at. Joe Manchin's race is going to be one of the most important ones in 2024. If Democrats lose in West Virginia, it will definitely be a big blow to their party and also a big blow to bipartisanship nationwide. And so that'll be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below. If you enjoyed it, comment down below. Do you think Evan McMullen can actually defeat Mike Lee in Utah? And do you think Herschel Walker will win in Georgia this year? Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next video.